your next program is going to be the bowling scores program. Now this is going to be very similar to the program that you just finished, the test scores program, because you found an average there, and you're going to find an average for your bowling scores. So let's just take a look at what the output could be. Here's a description of the program. This program will be very similar to the class average program. You can use it as your guide. For this assignment, ask the user for bowling scores until there are no more bowling scores to add. So you're going to use an indefinite loop with a sentinel. A valid balance bowling score is from 0 to 300. While in the loop, find the highest and lowest bowling score entered. Also calculate the average of the bowling scores. When you run the program, the output could look like this. Here's an example. So you're going to enter a lot of bowling scores. We're going to use negative 1 as our sentinel to quit. And when we have negative 1, we do not want to include it in the sum or count it. And it, does, it cannot be the high or the low score. So just think about that when you're doing your while loop. Now, since you've already done a loop with a sentinel, you might look back on your other program, find this particular function, and you might want to kind of copy and paste it or use it as your guide when you create your new program. You're also going to have an introduction. You're going to have a calculate average. You probably won't have a print results. And you're going to have a main without all these different choices. So you're going to start a new cold sculptor program. Go ahead and start with the intro. Maybe you want to copy and paste this, paste this function or use it as your guide. And your new program will look something like this. So I've got my intro. I've got my calculate average. It's very similar. I've got my print results. And now in my get score total, instead of calling it indefinite loop, I'm going to call it get score total. I'm still going to have sum, count, score. I'm going to have a while loop. Negative 1 is my sentinel. And I'm going to return my sum and count. Now really think about what's going to happen inside this loop. You're going to ask for the score. You're going to test it to see if it's within the right range, 0 to 300. If it is, you're going to add it to the sum. You're going to use the counter and ask for a new score again. So just really think about this. What if they enter an invalid number? Maybe you want to say a message. Let's run my program to see what it looks like. So I'm going to enter a bowling score, 56. Let's enter 108. Let's enter 800. Now that's not a valid, valid score. I want to make sure I don't count it and I don't add it to the sum. And you can see that I printed a little message here, invalid score, not counted. But it's still going to ask me for more scores. So let's do 62, 258, and that's all the scores I have. So now I'm going to do negative 1, my sentinel. And the program should print. Now you can see that I forgot to call my print results. So let's go ahead and do that. And remember that the order counts. So here, if I said count average, here I'm going to say count average. So it doesn't really matter what the order is. What matters is that you are consistent. Okay, so always match everything. All right, let's try running this program again. I'm going to enter some bowling scores. Let's enter some good ones. I'm going to enter an outrageous number. It will say invalid. I'm going to enter another outrageous number. And it hopefully did not count that one. The bowling average 160. So you can pause this video and get this much of your program to work. Now let's talk about how to find the high score. We can use this in another function and call it in where we get the scores. So first of all, we need a new variable for this. So we have sum and count and score. We're also going to need some kind of variable for the highest value. Now, what should the initial value be for high? You don't want to start it at the highest because you want to keep going as you go. So you're going to start the high, the initial value of high is going to be something that it really couldn't be. So I'm going to start at zero. Now, you're also going to do one for low. So think about it. How would you start low? Would you start low at zero? Probably not because that could be the low score. So you really want to kind of do the opposite. So I'm going to, my initial value of high is going to be zero. And I hope that's not the case in the end. Now we're going to do a new function, and I'm going to go ahead and call this high score. I'm going to be comparing the current high score with the score that the user just entered. So I actually have to pass in both of these as parameters. 
It doesn't matter which one I do first, as long as I stay consistent. So if I'm going to do high and score as my parameters, high and score will also need to be the arguments. Now all I'm going to do is compare. I'm going to use an if statement. So if the new score is higher than the high score, I want to switch the two. So a simple comparison using greater than. If the score is higher, then I just reassign the value of high to score. What if the score isn't higher? Nothing happens. I'm not going to have an else or an elif, just I'm not going to change. High remains high. And then I return high. So it's a fairly simple little algorithm just to keep testing to see if the highest score is assigned high. Now it's going to be similar for low, but it's going to be kind of switched. Am I going to be checking if it's greater than? Mm, probably not. Maybe I'm going to be checking for lower than. And I'm going to have low instead of high. But it's going to be similar. Now hopefully you've worked out in your while loop how to take care of values that don't fit between 0 and 300. So you can see in mine I used an if statement and I made sure that it was valid and if so I incremented and accumulated. Now here's where I want to call high. I only want to do it if it's a valid score. High, is, high score function is a return function so I have to assign it to a variable and this is my high variable. It also has two parameters, uh, arguments. I want to make sure that they are the same order as the parameters. Okay, so I've defined the function. I've called the function. I also want to return high so that my main function has its value. Here I've returned sum and count. I also want to return high. Now where I call get score total, I'm now returning three values instead of just two. So if I have sum and count, I also want to put high. I probably want to print this as well. So I'm printing count and average. Let's put in high as an argument, and let's put in high as a parameter. I'm going to add in another print statement. And let's try running this. So I'm going to put in some numbers. That was a ridiculous number, so I got the appropriate message right here. I'm even going to put in 300. And I'm going to quit. And there's my high score, 300. So you want to get your high function to work. You also want to get your low function to work. Remember to call it. Remember to pass in the parameters add it in everywhere so that your final results might look something like this right here. Then, once you're finished, come back to the video for our final comments. So, what are the final things you can do to this program? If you're pretty much out of time and you're satisfied with what you've got, then go ahead and turn in what you've got. This will be a great program. But maybe you're up for an additional challenge. So one suggestion is to put your main function into a loop. So you can do more than one set of scores. You can ask them, do you have more scores to average? And then, you know, keep on going. So I really encourage you to put your main function into a loop. And then for an additional challenge, maybe try using a Boolean variable. If you look in your textbook on page 169, there's a special tip 4.1 that talks to you about using a Boolean variable for a condition in a while loop. And I've kind of been working on that over here. And if you take a look at my output, you can see I've got everything working great and a little thank you for running my program if I choose not to continue. So go ahead and challenge yourself. Try something a little bit different. Try something that you've already tried before and just keep on working with your loops. When you're finished, turn in your program.